Good evening, beloved, and welcome to a time with the SL. Thank God for the start of a beautiful new week. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather together in this Bible study. Our hearts are filled with gratitude and anticipation. And so we invite you, invite you to come and talk to us, Lord. Be with us as we delve into your word. Open our minds and our hearts to receive the truths that you have prepared for us. May this time of our study and fellowship draw us closer to you and to one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we are still in our series, Testing. And the message today is titled, Test. This makes no sense. Has anyone been, have you had to face something which was just ridiculous? Just ridiculous. You're just like, what the heck is going on in this situation? Lord, this evening we believe that we humbly come before your throne, but we also come boldly to your holy place. Who wants to tell God that life makes no sense to them? Who is here? You actually, let's be, let's be truthful. Who is here other than me? Because I want to say, I, I, I actually have that in my heart, that life really makes no sense. Is there anyone here that shares the same sentiment with me? That this life I'm living, it does not make sense. And he says we should come before him boldly. It doesn't make any sense. There are so many tests that we are facing that make no sense to us. They don't make any sense. I, that's, that's the point at which I'm at now. Why? Do I have to go through certain things? Why? In fact, there was a day I said, hmm, if we should have just stayed in heaven. I'm telling you, this is me, pastor, telling you this thing. Let's look at Matthew 7, 7. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Let's just keep that one. Let's keep that one to one side. Do you know something? What the Bible has taught me is that from that first day you prayed, you know you touched the heart of God. The very first day you prayed, your prayer touched God's heart. Do you know that? How do I know this? Let's look at the life of Daniel. Let's look at the life of Daniel. The Bible tells us that Daniel was a great man of prayer. Daniel faithfully prayed three times a day and trusted God. Okay? So some of us, we are, we are getting there small. We do fight the one in the morning, we do the one at night, and then some do in between. So we are getting there. But plus all his prayers and everything, Daniel too, he faced tests. There was a certain test question that Daniel had to, he had to learn. He had to, he had to learn, you know, for you to pass a test, it means you have learned the lesson. And we know Daniel as a man that passed the test. Every test set before Daniel, Daniel passed. I can't say the same for myself because there are a lot of tests that I fail. But we know that every test that was set before Daniel, he passed. Now we have hindsight. We can sit and watch Daniel. We can read about Daniel. We are watching his life. But you know that when Daniel was walking in the season of testing, his test did not always make sense to him. 
So we have to ask ourselves, what is it that Daniel did? How was Daniel able to navigate life? How was he able to navigate these tests in his life? One thing we know is that Daniel trusted God throughout his life. He didn't stop trusting God. So what have we learned? That God can help during testing seasons. Keep that also to one side. God can help during testing seasons. Daniel had to learn to trust God even when it did not make sense to him. When Daniel was captured and taken to Babylon, and they put them in a part of the palace, and they said that they should feed them well, take good care of them. You know, Daniel didn't start praying when he got to Babylon. Daniel had been praying from Jerusalem. He just continued the pattern of Jerusalem living in Babylon. So Daniel always had that relationship with God. It didn't start in Babylon. Are you following me this evening? You see, the food Daniel was eating in Jerusalem, he tried to replicate it in Babylon. That is why he said they did not want that diet of wine and enjoyment at the king's table. Always be careful. Though. When you see an improvement in your life, don't change your lifestyle. That's a lesson that we learn from the life of Daniel. Some of us, when something changes, Agbabola, how much is money? All of a sudden, what you are doing before you stop doing. Daniel had to learn to trust God even when it did not make sense to him. So he said to the king's servant, we don't want the wine and the dietary system of the king's table. There were many of them that were taken from Jerusalem, but four of them said, please exempt us from this thing. And they had a test before them. They said, give us 10 days. That request would have to pass the test. What Daniel was saying was that in 10 days, you will see that we'll be looking as good, if not better, than the people that are enjoying. The test was a 10-day trial period. Daniel 1.14 says, so he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. Today, it seems that many teach that we are exempt from the test. You know, you see a Christian having a party, but because you want to conform, you do things that the world, because you know, I'm, I'm expecting guests from everywhere, so let us do what they are used to. Or you know, it's like pastors. I ask you this question. If in rebirth, hmm, I say to you, we in rebirth, we don't eat meat. Imagine we don't eat meat in rebirth. And the members of the ministry, I'm not saying we, we eat meat in our ministry, I'm just saying imagine. And members of the ministry, we don't eat meat. If I come on social media, and I abuse them for eating meat. Who am I addressing? Who am I addressing? Is it not the members of Rebirth? But why would I come on social media to address them? 
but I know everybody else is going to see it and everyone else is going to respond to it. You have to be so careful. You have to be so careful. You see, a lot of things that you see that ministers of God are speaking on social media, they are speaking to their congregation. They're not speaking to everybody. So it may seem strange to you, but it's not strange to the people that they are talking to. So perhaps they should stop speaking on social media and speak directly to their congregation. But many teach that we are exempt from the test. Everyone is going to be tested. We will all be tested. If you're not told, what are you going to do when the going gets tough? Anything can happen to any of us at any time. No one is exempt. We will face many tough times. Growing up, we used to say when the going gets tough, the tough get going. But no, they don't say it again. Do you hear it? Do you hear people saying that thing? When you are very young, you used to hear it. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Do you hear it? It's not modern day norm. Modern day norm is find a way around it. Quit. You don't have to go through pain. You don't have to go through stress. I've had people tell me, Esther, I don't want my children to go through what I went through. Why would they not go through what you went through? What you went through is what has made you who you are today. Why do you want to make life easy for your child in a world that is not easy? Eh? We are like water. We like to take the path of least resistance. We like to say, Ke sera, sera, what will be, will be. Nobody is preparing. No effort. You see somebody doing great things. You think that it was just one day. I remember somebody called my senior brother. This was years ago. Years ago. He said, the wife was pregnant, was about to have a baby, and they were having some challenges. Could he give them money? <laughs> he said, he asked her, let me ask the man. He said, you didn't know she was pregnant. Wow. He said, what does my brother mean by that? He said, ah. Because for you, she's nine months pregnant. You are looking for funds for the delivery. Ah. He said, it means you didn't know she was pregnant. Because at least you have the time when you are trying to get her pregnant. And you have the eight months of gestation. To sort out everything to do with the delivery. Why would you wait until the last month? Didn't you know she was going to give birth? Many of us, we exert little effort. I say to people that when you see someone that is blessing you, know that that thing they are giving you, it means they are doing without something. Do you know that? Have you ever thought about it? That for every one penny that comes out of someone's pocket, they could be using that one penny for something for themselves. That there's a sacrifice that is being made. Don't think that because people are generous is because they're generous because there's plenty. No. That's not what it is. We make little plans. If there's little preparation, if you exert little effort, you will produce little fruit. You will produce little fruit. Life is hard for everybody. Everybody goes through tests. Everybody goes through tests. And you end up with little accountability. 
Many people make offerings of excuses. And when you are speaking, they refuse to be corrected. You don't understand. Of course we understand. Do you know why people refuse to be corrected? Because they don't believe they are doing anything wrong. And if you don't believe you are doing anything wrong, it means that you will not learn because you are not teachable. Automatically, you will lose sight of the goals that are before you. You start saying, why doesn't God explain this to me? Why should God explain it to you? Why? Why should God explain it? Have you seen anyone that God was explaining to? Sovereign God, explain to you why. Who are you in the scheme of things? Daniel 117, as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. But he still faced the test. He passed the test. He passed the test. There are still so many tests. There's another test. How many people forget those people that helped them to achieve? How many people? The Bible shows us Daniel stood by his friends. They stood together. Have you noticed something? That the person that God uses to bless you, chances are God is going to use them to bless you again and again and again and again. Do you know that? So ask yourself, if they bless you the first time and you forget them, how are you going to get the blessing the second time? Daniel remembered. He didn't forget. Daniel 248. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of all the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. He didn't forget his friends. He didn't forget those that stood with him. Who have you forgotten? Many of us, we want trophies without a challenge. Think about it. Have you ever seen a team lose every game and their players never came to practice? Eh? Have you ever seen a team that lost every game? Hmm? Their players never ever came to practice. Have you ever seen them win a trophy before? Hmm? Have you ever seen losers win a trophy before? If you don't have a test, you will chip in the meaning of the game. Sometimes we sit back and we say, Ah, they are paying footballers too much money. Go and play now. Go and play. If it, what they are doing is easy, go and play. Let your children go and play football. Why are they not playing football? If it's easy. Eh? For one game. For one season. No problem. You go and play. Go and do what they are doing. If it's easy. Or someone is boxing. Go and put your... Let them just box you two times. If it's easy. You must realize something that God's best work makes no sense to the feelings and to the eyes. You will see it and you will be saying, why? 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 Why then? What is affected? Your eyes and your feelings. You, when you see it, and understand there will be more than one test. And you know what I found about tests? It's as if each test gets harder and harder. Have you noticed it? 
Each test gets harder and harder. But you see, Daniel and his three friends understood that promotion comes after you pass the test. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel, um, Daniel 3.16 Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are careful, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the fire. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the form of his visage was, ch was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. If you are diligent, you will recognize that testing has a progressive nature. It goes higher and higher and higher. How hot was the fire? They faced the test that they should bow. They said they are not going to bow. And you will not bow. Okay. They now made the test seven times more difficult for them. I want to warn you now. Hmm? Be very careful that you don't set anyone up for a test. Do you understand? Be careful of throwing people into fire. Do you hear me? It's very important. Too. When you see that they want to deal with somebody, just respectfully just move back. Respectfully move back. When you look at the example of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, let's look at Daniel 3.22. Daniel 3.22. Therefore, because of the king's commandment, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The trouble was so much. Hmm? They had not even started the punishment on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The people that they sent to do the bad something, they were the first ones that were destroyed. Be very careful. But you must pass the test. After you pass the test, promotion will come to you. Amen. Many people, what they think is because you have gone through the test. If you go through the test and you fail, nothing. Daniel 3.30 Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. When we read the story of Daniel and those three boys, it was tough for them. Can't you see? They encountered challenges. Can you see now? That life was not easy for them in Babylon. Can you see? He faced a very difficult testing period, season. He did not understand the plan at the time which was going on. He didn't understand. But one thing we know that Daniel did was Daniel prayed. He prayed. He prayed. Then there was that other test that he faced. Remember the test? When Nebuchadnezzar said they should tell him, tell them, tell him his dream. How can you dream and tell me to tell you the dream? Daniel prayed. He felt nothing. He prayed. He saw nothing. He prayed. He heard nothing. <laughs> Who was going to explain to Daniel what was going on? Who? Another thing I've learned about tests is that delay is part of the testing process. 
delay. It's part of the testing process. Every time you pray, God hears you the very first time you pray. God hears you. The very first time you pray, God hears you. <laughs> you pray, no answer day one. No answer day two. Day three. <laughs> you say, has God forgotten me? Has God, God, where are you now? God has four F's for you after you pray and you wait for the season of testing. Number one, the first one is fear not. Fear not. Fret not. Faint not. And forget not. If you can hold on to those four things, fear not, fret not, faint not, and forget not. That longest season of prayer, 21 days. And there's one peace. Me, I call it stupid peace. I call it stupid peace now because I've come to understand. I've come to understand it's stupid peace. After 21 days, those roots of stupid peace, they started to grow fruit. And I'm going to explain why I call it stupid peace. You would think I'm not abusing anybody. But truly, that's what it is. It's stupid peace. Daniel 10, 11. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Why do I call it a stupid peace? Eh? You see, this season of testing you are going through may not make sense to you today. In fact, it may never even ever make sense to you. Eh? But God does his best work. When it makes no sense to you. Why? God does not need to explain his actions. That's number one. He's a sovereign God. God does not need to seek his permission. I mean to seek your permission. For his system of testing. He can do it anyhow. Because he's a sovereign God. God knows. Do you need to tell your servant what you are doing? Your cook. Your houseboy. Your driver. You don't need to tell them. You can, they can take you anywhere you want to go. I'll tell you why I call it a stupid piece. Listen, please turn your Bibles to Philippians 4, 7. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, it passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It passes all understanding. You cannot even explain it. God has a peace beyond your understanding. So every time, it seems like it is stupid because you don't understand it. Are you ignoring the situation? I will give you peace. You say to yourself, how can I have peace at a time like this? Well, Isaiah 55, 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hmm. So can one achieve perfect peace? No. And no. Why do I say this? Because Isaiah 26 3 tells me, Thou would keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusted in thee. Ha ha. Confusion. Can you know peace that passes all understanding? Does it not sound stupid? Faith 
must reach beyond your feelings and your emotion. It has nothing to do with the way you are feeling. Do you understand? You see, if you have the peace that passes all understanding, nothing will offend you. People will do things, you'll just be looking like this. And, mm. I will just step back. Huh? See, so don't look. Continue. I put my own boundary around me. Mm -hmm. So you can continue to do things in your life. No problem. Do you have that kind of peace and faith that few achieve? Psalm 119 verse 165 says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. And there's a free gift of peace. You don't have to earn it. So why is your heart troubled? Why is your heart troubled? So you and I, we can have that peace that passes all understanding. We can't understand it, but you will collect it. So it seems like it's stupid. What's going on here? No matter what happens, you are just there. Because you know God is in control. It has nothing to do with you. It has all to do with God. Will challenges end in your life? No. If you want to know my challenges, eh? But hey, I have peace. It seems stupid, but I have peace. Will you teach others, as you have learned today, that there is faith and peace that reaches beyond the brain? You have to accept it all. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. Thank you for this word this evening. I don't know who this word is for. That peace that passes all understanding. That peace that seems stupid. But the roots grow and fruit comes out of it. Abba, Father, you are all knowing, you are holding the world as we know it in your compassionate care. Through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, you made a way for peace to come and dwell among us. Yet we lose sight of this peace so quickly. At the first crumble of our comfort, we let our trust start to cave in. We become afraid. Peace seems lost when we are no longer feeling secure. Help us, Father, to believe beyond our fleeing feelings. Let your truth reign over our circumstances. What is the word of God saying concerning this thing? Please, Lord, we ask that you stretch out our fickle memory to recall your great grace in the hour of desperate need. Father, let Paul's inspired words become the framework for our everyday prayers. That we don't just call on you when we are in times of trouble, but we should involve you intimately in every single day of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we pray your word right now for us. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so, Father, we are praying that the richness of this truth, let it saturate every single crevice of our lives, of our professions, of our relationships, of our hobbies, in the lives of our family members, in our friendships, in our communities, even in our churches. Our feelings are so fickle, Lord. And we keep aching to feel your presence. Meanwhile, you are there. You have not gone anywhere. You said you will not leave us, you will not forsake us. You are with us to the very end of this age. So, Lord, we pray for more of you. More of you, Lord. Let your truth permeate into our thought life. Let 
that truth propel us to move to boldly honor you in all we do. Root us in your love, Father. Let your love guide our every action. Let your Lord, your, your love lead us to take full ownership of peace because it's what you have given to us. Jesus said that I leave you with a peace that the world does not know. Peace does not mean an absence of trouble. But that as I go through trouble, I know that Jesus is with me, so I am secure. Nothing will happen to me. Help us, Lord, to develop a faith strong enough to withstand every trial with grace and authenticity. Don't have to pretend. Don't have to pretend. You did not promise that the road will be easy. We were not promised that. So we know that there will be times where it seems as if peace has deserted us. In those moments, Lord, remind us, get on your knees and cry to me. Father, we will not forget in the mighty name of Jesus. You are the God and you are the, you are the God and the creator of the universe. You are the God, you are the creator of all. You are capable of shifting our minds and our hearts to remember the peace we have in Christ. And so, Lord, we ask that you continue to shift our minds in the mighty name of Jesus. When we are tempted to follow fleeting trails of rubbish promises, false sense of security, let us hear clearly the voice and the conviction of the Holy Spirit reminding us that he is with us. And Lord, we don't just want to hear, we want to also obey. We want to go where you are leading us to go. We want to do what you are calling us to do. Almighty God, you are close to the brokenhearted. You are the one you shield us all day long. Without you, what will we do? Without you, where will we be? And we know that we can cast all our anxieties on you. Whatever it is that is distracting us from peace, we can cast all those things onto you. Why? Because we know that you care for us. And we know you are mighty to save. You are love defined. What again do we want? In Christ, we can walk, walk through any turmoil, any difficult challenge, any battle. And as we are walking through turmoil, we are holding peace by the hand. Ah, you are great. You are wonderful. You are so loving, Yahweh. Just thank you, Abba Father. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than we can ever ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And so Father, we just want to thank you for this opportunity you have given us today at this hour of the day. Thank you that you have spoken to us a word in due season. Thank you for this same word that is spirit, life to us. Father, we depend on this word. We live and thank you for being faithful to it, Lord. Father, may your word help us to grow. May your word help us to keep doing your will in this life. Help us to understand it so well that we will not stop walking in your ways. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for sharing this evening with us. Time with the SL. We have Bible study at 10 p.m. Sister Ifia Bola is taking, I believe it is, First Chronicles chapter 22. Look forward to as many of you who will participate in that study. And of course, at quarter to midnight, we have our prayers before we go to bed. And then we'll see you in the morning for the 5 a.m. declarations. April is running by you, so make sure that you enjoy all the benefits of April. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Remain lifted in God's presence always. Amen.